In this video I will be showing you how to host lobbies and allow your friends to join them via Steam. This is the first part of multiple tutorials where I will show you how to make a Steam multiplayer game. So let's begin. Ok so the first step is to set up a project. So go to the link in the description to this mirror page on the Unity asset store and click add to my assets. Then back inside of Unity go to package manager, make sure packages is set to my assets and search for mirror. Click and import it in. The next step is to import Fizzy Steamworks, so I'll leave a link in the description to this website. Essentially this will allow us to make Mirror work with Steam. I will be using version 4.4.1 because the newer versions have a few changes that I will not be going over in this video. Click on Assets and just download the Unity package. Then simply open the package and you will get this Import Unity package menu. Just hit Import. At this stage everything is set up, so let's start coding. Okay, so we are going to be creating an empty game object in the hierarchy, and we are going to call this Network Manager. On here we will be adding a couple scripts, most of which will be already made for us, however we will be making our own custom script to do things like hosting lobbies and allowing players to connect. So the first component we're going to add is essentially a Network Manager. Instead of using the default mirror one, we will be creating our own one, so that later on we can override some functions. So select New Script and call this Custom Network Manager. And inside of the script we're going to remove everything from here and we're going to add a new using method of using mirror and change mono behavior to network manager. Hit save and go back into Unity. In Unity we're going to do a couple changes. First of all ensure that persist network manager to other scenes is ticked on and auto create player is off. Later on we'll be able to tick this on but for now we need it off. We also want to remove this KCP transport, so right click and hit remove component, and instead we are going to be adding Fizzy Steamworks, which is a transport of its own that works with Steam. An important thing to watch out for is the Steam app ID. By default this will be 480, which is essentially Space War, aka the name for any application that has not officially been published on Steam yet. For testing purposes you can leave it at 480, but sooner or later you will want to change this to your own application ID that can be found on the Steamworks website. The next script we're going to add is the Steam Manager script. And finally we are going to be adding a custom script called Steam Lobby. Now this script is going to be quite straightforward, but some of the Steam syntax is a little bit confusing so I will try my best to explain it as best as I can. First of all we want to add some using functions. So we're going to add using mirror and also using Steamworks. We can also remove both of these functions for now. So starting off we are going to be creating some callbacks. Now callbacks are essentially just functions that get called whenever something happens with Steam. For instance when someone joins a lobby, a join lobby callback will be called. So we want to create these and don't worry, I know it's a little bit confusing, but you will start to understand very soon. So to make callbacks we actually need to make them protected and we can just call the callback like this. Inside of here we want the name of the callback that we want to refer to. In this case our first callback will be lobby created and we will call this lobby created. We want to create another callback, just the same way we did that time, but instead this one's going to be game lobby join requested, and I'm going to call this join request. The final callback we're going to add is protected callback lobby entered, and we're going to call it lobby entered. These are the only callbacks we're going to use for now, but later on you can add as many as you want. So we have one for when the lobby's created, we have one for when someone requests to join, and we have one for when someone enters. Another thing we're going to do is set some variables. The first being a public ulong, which will be our current lobby ID. So whenever you create a lobby via Steam, it will have an ID number, and essentially you will be able to then use that number to join that lobby, or your friends will be able to essentially. So what we can do is make a reference to it so that we can access it in other scripts and later on in future tutorials. We also want to make a private constant string, and we are going to call this host address key and we are going to set it to host address and super important make sure that this spelling is correct otherwise you will be getting errors later on. We also want to make a reference to our custom network manager and I'm just going to call this manager and the final two things we're going to add is some game object. So we're going to make a reference to a public game object called host button. This will be the button that we'll press to host a game and we will also make a reference to a public text variable called lobby name text. Now right now you'll be getting an error, it's because we need to be using the unity engine.ui. And that is all of the variables we need to create, so we can now move on to the functions. So every one of these callbacks will need their own custom function. So we'll start with the first one and then move on to the second one and finally the last one. So the first one is lobby created. So let's make a private void on lobby created inside of which we want to reference the callback, so lobby created callback underscore t, just like in here, 
and we will call this callback. So the first thing we're going to do is check if the lobby has been created properly and successfully. If not, we do not want to continue this function. So to do this, we're going to do an if statement, and we are going to reference the callback, and reference our e result, and check if it is not okay, so e result, e result dot okay. And if that is the case, we want to return out of this function. Basically meaning we do not want to continue this function if something went wrong. I'm then going to make a debug.log saying lobby created successfully. Just so that I can have this reference for whenever I create a lobby and see if everything went correct. Next up, we will reference our manager and call start host. This will start the hosting of the game. Finally, we want to set some lobby data through Steam. And to do this, whenever you want to access any kind of lobby stuff, you want to reference Steam matchmaking, and then we're going to set some lobby data. So let's do dot set lobby data. Now inside of here, we need three variables. First of all, the Steam lobby ID, then the data we want to edit, and what we want to edit it to. So first of all, let's get our Steam lobby ID. And this is super simple, because we can just use the Steam lobby ID in the callback. However, we need to convert it from a ulong into a C Steam ID. As you can see right here, this function requires a C Steam ID. So we can do a new C Steam ID, inside of which we're going to reference callback, and then the UL Steam ID lobby. Next up is the data we want to change. In our case, we want to change the host address key. And what do we want to change it to? Well, the host address key will essentially just be our Steam user ID. So we can just reference Steam user, and then get Steam ID. However, this needs to be a string, so we can do dot to string, like so, and this function is completed. The next data we are going to set is the name of the lobby. This isn't necessarily required, but for this tutorial I'm going to do this, as later on we'll also be referencing it. So let's once again do Steam matchmaking, set lobby data, and we can essentially just copy this from here, we don't have to type it out again. This time we want to change the name of the lobby, and now what do we want to change it to? In my case, I am going to change it to the name of the person who hosts the game. So to do this, we can do Steam friends dot get persona name dot to string. I'm also going to add a little bit of text that says someone's lobby, like this. If I zoom out a second, these are the two functions that we have. If you want, I just copy them over. So officially, this function is completed. Now let's move on to the next callback, which is join request. So private void on join request. Once again, we want to reference the callback name. So in this case, it's game lobby join request, and we're going to call it callback. Now this function is super simple. First of all, we are going to make a little debug.log and say request to join lobby. And then we will also allow them to join it, which once again, to access any lobby stuff, we want to access steam matchmaking dot join lobby. Now this function is going to take in the ID of the lobby, which we can just get through the callback and the Steam lobby ID. Thankfully, this one doesn't need to be a C Steam ID, it can just be a ulong, so we don't have to convert it. The final function we're going to make is the lobby entered. So let's make a private void called on lobby entered. Once again, we want to reference the lobby entered callback, and we are going to call it callback. So something you should understand is lobby entered gets called whenever anybody enters the lobby. This includes the hosts themselves. So there's certain things we want to do for everyone, and certain things we only want to do if you are a client and not the host of the lobby. So I'm going to name this everyone, and this is everything we want to do for everyone who enters the lobby, including the host. First of all, we want to set the host button, set active on false, so we can essentially disable it. We also want to set the current lobby ID to equal our callback dot steam lobby ID. We also want to reference our lobby name text, and we're going to reference the game object because we want to set this to true, essentially enable it. And we also want to set the name of the lobby. So to do this, we'll grab the text, dot text, and we will make it equal steam matchmaking, dot get lobby data, inside of which we want to do another new C steam ID, where we will reference our callback, and then the steam lobby ID. We want to access the name. Okay, so now we want to do certain things just for the client. So first of all, let's check if you are a client. Now to do this, we can do an if statement, and do network server, dot active, and if that is true, we will just return out of the function. So the first thing we want to do is actually set our manager's network address, and we're going to make this equal our Steam matchmaking dot get lobby data. I am once again just going to copy the Steam ID and then the data we want to access, so the host address key. And the final thing we want to do is just start the client. So manager dot start client. Perfect. These functions are now finished. However, as you can see, they are slightly grayed out. 
and that's because they are not initialized. So we can actually initialize these callbacks in the start method. So let's make a void start, inside of which we are going to initialize everything. So first of all, let's check if Steam is actually open. The reason we do this is because none of this is actually going to work if Steam isn't launched. And if we're testing this in the editor, it's really easy to not have Steam open. So to check if Steam is open, we can do an if statement and check if Steam Manager dot initialized. And if it's not initialized, we just want to return and not do anything. We also want to make a reference to our manager. And since this is on the same object, we can just do get component custom network manager. And now we want to initialize these callbacks. And this is super simple. So the first callback is lobby created. So let's do lobby created. And let's make this equal a callback. And then the name of the callback, so lobby created dot create, and then the function. So our function is on lobby created. And we want to do this two more times for the other callbacks as well. So the second one is join request. So join request. And this is game join requested. And then the name is on join request. The final one is lobby entered. So let's do lobby entered. The callback is called lobby entered. And finally, the function is called on lobby entered. Okay, so that is initialized. And now to make the button work, we need to make a custom function for it. So let's make a public void called host lobby. And inside of here, we will host our lobby. So let's do steam matchmaking dot create lobby. And then this is going to take two things. First of all, the lobby type and the maximum amount of people. So if you do e lobby type and then dot, these are the different types of lobbies you can have. So we can have friends only, invisible, private, private, unique, and public. And you can read up on what everything means on the Steam documentation. For this case, I will be using friends only, but later on in a future tutorial, I'll show you how you can have the player actually choose what type of lobby they want to create. And then finally, we want the maximum numbers. So instead of just having like a value of like five, for instance, let's actually get this value from the network manager. So it's called manager dot max connections and there we go that is everything in the script and I promised it wasn't very long and here it is in total so now let's go back into unity the final thing we need to do in unity is first of all set up our scene so let's create a new canvas okay so I've got my new canvas and I have a button called host button and a text called lobby name so first of all let's actually disable our lobby name then on the button scroll down and click on click Drag in your network manager, then access the Steam lobby and host lobby. Finally, on the network manager, if we go in here, let's actually assign our button and our text. So with Steam launched, let's press play and see what happens. Okay, so inside of here, let's press host game. And there we go. We see that the lobby created successfully, starting server and server started listening. And as you can see, it says my Steam name and then lobby. So now let's actually test it with another player. So to actually test your game, you need to locate Steam, go into your library and click add game, add a non-Steam game, click browse and find the build of your game. In my case, it's here and just select the application and press open and then add selected programs. Your game should now appear in your library and you can just launch it from here to test it. Remember, you can also actually just test it in the editor if that's what you want to do. So I will now test it on two different Steam accounts to show you what happens when someone joins my game and how exactly that works. Okay, so to test these games, you're going to need two Steam accounts. So I've got my PC and my laptop. So on my laptop, I'm going to launch the game. I will also launch the game on my editor here on my PC. Now I'm going to have my laptop click host game. And now that I've launched it, I should be able to join it. Now to join it, I can just go on to Steam, click friends and chat, locate my second account and hit join game. Once I click that, back inside of here, I should be in the game and it has the name of my second account and it's exactly the same on the second laptop, meaning it works. Just to demonstrate as well, my second account can actually send me an invite via Steam. I should then receive it and be able to hit play game. And just as before, I am in the lobby. So that is it for this tutorial. In the next part, I will be showing you how to display who's in the lobby, the player's name, their icons, and whether they're a host or not. I will also be showing you how to ready up. Plus, more tutorials will come showing you how to do player movement and a bunch of other things. So if you don't want to miss out, make sure to subscribe. Also, the source code for this project is available on my Patreon, as always. And thank you everyone who is a Patreon and everyone who watched this video to the end. So I will see you guys later. Bye!